Acadia National Park is located in the northeast portion of the United States in the state of Maine. The park preserves multiple islands, with Mount Desert Island being the main spot the tourists visit. The national park has the tallest mountain on the Atlantic coast of the country, as well as one of the most photographed lighthouses, multiple adventurous trails with iron rung ladders, and miles of historic carriage trails. It was established in 1919 and it's a stunning area that must be explored to truly appreciate. My dad and I visited in the middle of October and got to experience amazing fall colors during our 36 hours in the park. Here's all the information on what we did during our time in Acadia National Park and let me know what your favorite spot is in the comments. Also be sure to subscribe as I plan to visit every United States National Park. We spent the day driving from New Hampshire all the way through Maine to Bar Harbor. First moose sighting. It's a moose. I wanted to make sure we got there in time to do the precipice trail, so we headed right through the city and all the way to the trailhead. It's on a one-way road, so note that it's a long drive back to the trailhead if you miss a spot to park. Luckily, since it was towards the end of the day, we found a spot easily. We made it to Acadia National Park. I'm here with Pops. We're gonna spend the next 36 hours exploring. First stop, precipice trail. For me, are you, are you gonna go? I'm gonna try to do a little hike somewhere, but I ain't going <laughs> up precipices. So Josh did the precipice trail, so I thought I'd come down here and check out Sand Beach. So this is an incredible spot. How often do you have mountain hiking overlooking a gorgeous ocean beach like this? Just amazing. Pops is really into time lapses now, so he made a few time lapses here while the sun was going down. More on this beach when I visit it tomorrow, but now back to the precipice trail. Before even starting the trail, there are lots of warnings about how it's one of the steepest and most challenging trails in Acadia. This is a shortened video of the trail with just the highlights and you can see the full video on my channel. This is the second warning. Falls have resulted in serious injury or death and it's a near vertical hike all the way up. Look at all the amazing fall colors right now. It's going to be a beautiful time in Acadia, I think. The beginning of this trail is basically scrambling across a large boulder field as you make your way up. The next section of the trail actually has you go under a few of the big rocks. Could get a little small for this section. That's some climbing. So we made it to another fun section. There's a little bridge right here and then you can see that all along this side of the rock there's some rebar. Stops you from falling. This section is a good introduction to what you're going to be doing later on in the trail at a much higher elevation. Look at these stairs. These things are massive. When you reach the top of these stairs, you'll see the split with the orange and black trail. To complete the loop, you can either take the trail down to the road and walk the road back to the parking area, or you can take the path back to this split and you can go down this section that you came up. I mean, it's really nice. They have these type of handles and everything anytime you need them. You guys, I'm not gonna lie. This is one of the toughest hikes I've done in a while. It's straight up. After you pass the split and go up another five to six minutes, this is where the trail really starts to become tough. From here on out, you'll see many of the ladders and cliff walks that you've heard about on this trail. Check it out, there's a 10 foot ladder and then there's Two more ladders above it. From here the trail really starts to go up and you have about 40 feet of ladders you have to climb. All right, so we came around this bend and now we have to go all the way up that ladder with this drop in view out there. It's a little crazy. I feel like this section is the first time that you really get a feel of what this trail is gonna be like the rest of the way. So that's where we started right there. We came up a ladder right here, went across, came up a bunch of ladders, and then went across that section. As you continue on, it's more of the same small ladders and cliff walks. The cliff walks just continue to have a little bit more of a drop as you make your way up. There's Pops down there at the car, and we are all the way up here. 
Even with the trail being treacherous, the views are stunning. There's basically no trees blocking you on the way up, so you can get some amazing views of Mount Desert Island. I mean, I don't think I gotta tell you guys this, but this trail is legit crazy. <laughs> it is so epic though. Look at that ladder right there with this view. After coming up this ladder, <laughs> you just go right along the side of this, all holding on. It's a good drop. I think we got only a couple more ladders <laughs> before we get to the summit up there. This last section of the trail is easily the worst part. Here you're the most exposed and you have a few tall ladders you need to climb and then a long narrow catwalk section. While I really loved this trail, it did get my blood pumping a little bit here. All right, I think this is the craziest part. We're gonna come right along this ledge. As you can no doubt tell, it's a little bit narrow and it has probably a 40 to 50 foot drop on the right side. We made it! There's the cliff edge from above that we just came up. It's a pretty good drop and it's got some epic views. Once you finally make it to the top of this section, you can breathe a little easy again and you can just soak in the amazing views. This isn't the ultimate summit though, you have to continue climbing in order to reach the summit, but this is the best spot for views, so take your pictures here before continuing on. We left the cliff's edge behind and we're just walking through the trees up to the summit. There's one more ladder you have to climb to get to the summit, but after what you've already done, it'll feel like a cakewalk. Plus all of the beautiful fall trees up here were a nice welcome after the crazy climb. Woohoo, we made it to the summit. When you reach the summit, you'll be sitting at 1,058 feet of elevation. This is easily the most difficult hike I've ever done to reach that elevation. If you're up here on a clear day, the views are awe-inspiring. You can see across the water to the other parts of Acadia National Park and even a few lighthouses. Something I didn't know before I visited was how many islands were all around the park. After taking your time at the summit, you'll want to start the loop back down. The park recommends that you don't try to go down the crazy section that you came up and that you just go down the other way. I recommend this too and you'll get some awesome views on the way back down. If you go down this way, you just have to follow these blue marks. If you want to reach the summit without doing the ladder section, you can actually hike up this way as well, but note that it's also really steep. Almost back down, but look at the view on this section of the trail. With the water and the fall, the islands. I'm a little desensitized to fall colors because we've done a lot over the last three days, but I mean, how can this ever not be impressive? The park is much busier in the fall, but it's definitely worth visiting if you get the chance. Even this path is very steep, so don't underestimate it. Eventually you'll make it to another split, which will point you to the road if you want to go that direction. All right, I made it back to the main road. From here, it's a half mile walk back to the parking area, or Pops is just waiting for you, right there. If you have to walk back along the road, it's about a half mile to get to the parking area, but we continued on to our sunset spot. As we were heading back, we decided to stop at Otter Point for sunset. Looks like we might get a little bit of sunset left, so we'll see. Oh wow, the last bit of sunset. We basically stumbled on this point as I googled sunset spots while we were driving away from the precipice trail. People seem to love Otter Point and there is at least two dozen people out here with us. Bob's doing work with the time lapse. I'll let you be the judge though. Player right here. 
Pops is trying to up his time lapse game, so let him know what you think of this one in the comments. We got there a little late for sunset, but it was still an incredible spot to just sit and relax. After finishing up our time watching the sunset, we took the long, windy, one-way road back to Bar Harbor. We hadn't even checked into our hotel yet as we had rushed to the precipice trail, so we went there first. Just checked into our hotel, the Main Street Motel, I think it's called. Looks fine for what we're doing. Looks great, very clean. There's our hotel right there and it is right next to the Bar Harbor Lobster Company. So we're gonna go check it out. Never mind, we're not gonna check it out. <laughs> it's closed. Book one. <laughs> Everything in Bar Harbor was incredibly busy because this was a popular time to come with the fall colors, but our hotel recommended the Blaze Kitchen and we were able to find two spots at the bar. They're known for their crab cakes and their lobster pizza and we tried both of them. It ended up being a really good dinner spot at Blaze. I didn't check what market price was for my lobster pizza. It ended up being $38, so <laughs> a little steep, but it was very good. And that is the end of our first day in Acadia. Day two started with an early morning drive up to Cadillac Mountain for sunrise. Watching the sunrise from Cadillac Mountain is one of the most popular things to do in the park. They have a reservation system and you have to get permits right at a specific time two days in advance. When we went, the permits were sold out within 10 seconds, so be sure you're ready to book them if this is something you wanna do. Second day in Acadia, we are at the summit of Cadillac Mountain, which is the first place in the United States to see the sunrise. So hopefully it's not too cloudy and we get a good one today. There was a big rainstorm coming in later this day, so I thought we might not be able to see the sunrise, but we were greeted with some amazing views right when we got out of the car. There's people and photographers all over, so you're gonna have to walk a little bit to get to a spot where you can see it by yourself, but luckily it's a big area and with a little bit of walking, you should be good. Our sunrise spot. It was pretty windy and cold, but the adrenaline from how beautiful this sunrise was made it easy to sit and watch. My dad and I spent about an hour just sitting here taking it all in and he did another time lapse of the sunrise for you to see. Also, apparently there are cruises here as there was a cruise ship that was entering the harbor while we were watching. Eventually when the sun crested the horizon and we saw the first sunrise in the entire United States, it's one of those experiences I'll never forget. If you're visiting Acadia National Park, make sure you get a sunrise reservation. It's something you do not want to miss. Here's the time lapse my dad shot of the sunrise from Cadillac Mountain. Stunning sunrise experience, probably one of the best I've ever seen. The only way I could describe that, I think, is magical. What do you think, Pops? I just would say it was perfect. Perfect. Was perfect. Uh, that's pretty good. The, the horizon, the ball, the clouds moving, just perfect. After leaving Cadillac Mountain, we made the drive back down into Bar Harbor. We wanted to get a quick breakfast, so we went to Coco Latte and grabbed a coffee and some food. We were headed to the Beehive Trail first, and this is one of the most popular in the park, so we wanted to get there as early as we could to get a parking spot to be able to start the trail. We grabbed our bagels to go because we wanted to get to the trailhead, but it's not super busy today. How's the bagel? Yeah, it's fine. We're heading out on the Beehive Trail. Look at this beautiful fall foliage that we have. You guys, look at Pops walking through this magical field of orange right now. This trail has the iron ladders as well, but it's easier than the precipice trail. Like the trail yesterday, they are a little bit hard to follow, so look for the blue marks. It only has 500 feet of elevation gain where the precipice trail had over a thousand. All right, this is where we're saying goodbye to Pops. He's gonna do the backside and I'm going to do the beehive. Warning, this trail follows a nearly vertical route with exposed cliffs. That's what the other one said. So we're in for a treat today. This should go without saying if you know anything about these trails or if you saw the one yesterday, but not for those who are afraid of heights. The nice thing about this trail is that it had a longer, more gradual way to get to the top. That way my dad and many others who don't like heights can actually get to the top of the beehive without having to do the iron ladders. 
Going that way is still pretty steep, but it's like a normal hiking trail. For me though, I began ascending the 0.2 mile trail to the summit with 500 feet of elevation and iron ladders. Wow, look at those views of the sun coming up, reflecting off of the water. Wow. Plus, look at all the epic fall colors out here. I love how unique both the precipice and the beehive trail are in Acadia. Starting the first of a few ladders. If you're wondering whether or not you can do the precipice trail, I would recommend doing the beehive trail first and seeing how you feel about that. For me, the precipice trail was at least multiple times more crazy than the beehive trail, but if you can do that one, you can probably do the precipice trail. The views as you go up on this trail are absolutely stunning. You can see out over the water and into the distance and the fall colors are beautiful as well. Even though I went pretty early in the morning, the trail was already packed. I had to wait at multiple ladders for people to finish their climb and when we got back the parking lot was packed as well, so I would imagine this is a pretty busy trail most of the time. We came up from there. We're heading up that way. As you continue up, you'll have to cross many ladders and some steep cliff walks. Again, even though I'm saying this is a lot easier than the precipice trail, it's still a pretty crazy trail. There's a lot of exposure on the ladders and the cliff walks and there was multiple people that were really struggling with the heights here. Take that into consideration if you decide to do it. I'm so glad I got a chance to do this trail, it was one of the coolest short trails I've ever done. Made it to the top of Beehive, way shorter and less intense than Precipice, but equally awesome. Beehive Summit, 520 feet of elevation. The summit is basically a large granite rock and you get a 180 degree view from up here. That big mountain off to the left right there is the summit of Precipice, which we did yesterday, right here. I loved seeing the islands out in the distance and all the fall colors. It was a pretty incredible time to be in the park. Eventually I found my dad who had taken the trail in the wrong direction and found a good viewpoint but didn't get to the official summit. We found Pops. He took a couple photos of me and then he headed onto the summit while I walked back down so I could go over to the beach. The walk down felt pretty gradual based on what I had done at the beehive section, but it was about a half mile and there were a couple steep parts. Here's a good view of what it looks like to hike the beehive from below. According to the sign, Sand Beach is a geological rarity. It's one of the few cold water shell-based sand beaches in the entire world. Surprisingly, most of the coast of Maine is hard granite and so being able to find a place like this is pretty special in the national park. It's also just a beautiful beach to sit and relax at while you're exploring Acadia, but because it shares a parking lot with the Beehive Trail, be sure to note that the parking can fill up pretty quickly. Next up, we're heading out to Thunder Hole. I don't think it's gonna be going off right now, but at least show you where it's at if you come and you can see it. A ranger told me that the Thunder Hole area is best visited about two hours before high tide. It wasn't anywhere near that time when we went, and since it's a one lane road to get here and we had a lot of other attractions to see, we weren't able to actually come back for high tide. Basically, there's a small inlet with a cavern at the end, and as the waves come in, it creates a large thundering billow sound. Let me know how it is in the comments if you get a chance to see it, and there's also a small national park store here. From there, we took about a 25 minute drive west to the other part of Mount Desert Island. This section's a lot less popular, so there's fewer people who travel over here. Just the ride itself was beautiful though, with lots of different bridges for the carriage roads and lots of fall colors. We followed signs to enter Arcadia National Park again in the Beach Mountain section. Our goal here was to hike to the top of Beach Mountain and the fire tower that sits up there. Hat tip to the bartender at Blaze who's the one who told me about this trail. We're still on Mount Desert Island but we're in the southwest section I think it is. We're doing the Beach Mountain hike to a fire lookout. If you go clockwise it's steeper, if you go counterclockwise it's gradual. We're going to get the steep out of the way first and then come down the gradual way. This is another short but steep trail and it gains about 350 feet of elevation in a third of a mile. 
It's not too bad if you take your time, but note that there are some steep sections where you have to cross some rock. I will say a lot of the hikes in the park are steep and rocky. After about 10 to 15 minutes of hiking, we started to get past the tree line and close to the summit. We made it to the lookout. When we visited, you could actually walk up the first flight of stairs to the tower. You can go all the way up to the halfway point, but you cannot go all the way to the top. The original wooden tower was built here in the 1940s and was used until the 1950s. After it fell into disrepair, they decided to replace it with the steel tower that you see today in the 1960s. The tower is no longer used as a fire lookout, but it's still pretty cool to see on top of the mountain. Basically, the entire summit is rock, so you can take a seat, have a snack, and relax before heading back down. The best views are definitely from halfway up the fire lookout. I couldn't record anything at the top because the wind was too bad, but that was really cool. Short, steep hike, but awesome fire lookout and some good views. Now we are heading on to Lobster. My dad and I weren't expecting much as we came back down from this hike, but we crossed around a bend and saw one of the best views we saw in the entire national park. From this vantage point, you were up over a lake with beautiful fall foliage all around you. We even saw a photographer and a bride and groom hiking up in their wedding attire to take pictures here. If you go up the steep way like we did, be sure to go down the other way so you can get those views. They were really impressive with the fall and the mountain and the little island out there. Amazing. We made it back. That was a nice little trail with an amazing view at the end when we were coming around that bend. Now we're heading down maybe to the lighthouse, maybe to lobster, but definitely both. From the hiking trail, it was about a 20 minute drive to get to the Bass Harbor Head Light Station. Along the way, you go through multiple small towns before turning off on the two lane road. I didn't realize how small the parking area was for this and how busy the lighthouse would be. There's probably 20 to 30 cars ahead of us, so my dad just dropped me off as he waited in line to find a parking spot. There are two main ways you can see the lighthouse on separate trails. The one to the right takes you down to this viewpoint, which is directly in front of the lighthouse, and then the other one goes down to the beach below, which is where the famous pictures are taken of it. To get to this area, you gotta descend about 40 stairs and then climb around on the rocks. I think it must have been a higher tide when we were there as I was shocked that it was incredibly difficult to see the lighthouse. I was one of the only people that climbed out to the furthest rock to take a picture. I've seen a lot of pictures from here with more rocks at the bottom so it must have just been high tide. It's very hard to see the lighthouse from down there, a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. You gotta climb on a bunch of rocks, but you can get a pretty iconic view. Pops was able to see it from the other end because the traffic was so bad, it took him a while to get in. But now we're heading on to get some lunch. All day, my dad and I had been excited about visiting this lobster spot, which was near the lighthouse. What a humongous bummer. Thurston said it was open, but it is closed for the season. So no lobster for us until maybe tonight, I guess. Even though we weren't able to get lunch, we did have a reservation for 2.15 at the Jordan Pond House. This was about a 25 minute drive back to where we were at earlier in the day. Jordan Pond is a popular area. We have a reservation at 2.15, but we spent the last 20 minutes trying to find parking. Finally got a spot so we can go try their famous roll they have there. If you wanna eat here, I highly recommend getting reservations in advance. Online, you can book them up to two weeks in advance and it definitely saves you a lot of time as they were quoting people an hour and a half to two hours when we were there. After checking in, it only took about 15 minutes before we were seated. Jordan Pond House. Looks fun. The main thing you get here is popovers. Supposedly they've been baking the popovers here since 1893. It's historic and something you must try in Acadia. This is the historic popover. That's interesting, it's kind of like eggy, a little spongy even with a crunchy outside. It's very good, definitely not something I've had before. All right, Pops is gonna try the popover. Now, butter and jam. That's the way to do it. <laughs> the strawberry jam is excellent. Putting the butter and the strawberry jam on it is definitely where it's at. That takes it to the next level. 
so after a day of hiking, we couldn't get lobster. We haven't had lunch. It's 2.30. This is popover number four. We're both pretty full now. Jelly and butter. <laughs> what we're eating. And egg. And egg. <laughs> but yeah, the popovers here are pretty great, especially if you haven't eaten anything since breakfast. After finishing our popovers, it was off to hike the Jordan Pond Trail. This is the second most popular trail in the park behind the Beehive Trail. We're heading out on our last hike in Acadia National Park, the Jordan Pond Loop. It's 3.1 miles round trip and it's relatively flat the entire way around the lake. We decided to do the trail clockwise and I wasn't expecting much but it ended up being one of my favorite trails. It's an incredible stroll and almost immediately you're greeted with an elevated boardwalk that makes the hike that much easier. This is a fun little elevated walking path through the forest right alongside the lake. Pair the views with the fall colors and you're in for one of the best family-friendly trails I've ever done. There's the Jordan Pond House. You can see how far we've already come all the way out here. The elevated pathway is only about 12 inches wide, but there are sections where you can get out of the way to pass people as they don't want you getting off the pathway. Once the hike gets about a mile in, it leaves the fun boardwalk behind. Now you're climbing on rocks. You can always just turn back and go along the boardwalk or you can keep going like this. This rocky section goes for less than a quarter of a mile and it's the only part of the entire trail that's like this, but it is a little bit more challenging, especially traveling with young children. We finished the rock hopping portion and we're back on a relatively flat dirt path. Once you make it to the other side of the pond, there's a small beach and there's an awesome wooden bridge. Note that there's no swimming here as this is a water supply. From here you can also catch the trails that go off to the bubbles, which are the two hills that are behind the pond. Storm's coming in, so it's starting to get a little cold and windy. And there's going to be a couple days of rain in the park, so we got really lucky, but I'm going to move a little faster on the way back it's getting cold. Pops, what do you think of this trail? This trail is really fun. Very family friendly, beautiful trees, get to look at the water. Yeah, very accessible. As you head back on the other side of the lake, it doesn't have the elevated boardwalk, it just has a wide dirt path that you're walking most of the way. We did this part relatively quickly, but stopped a lot to see the fall colors, which are all around us. We made it back to the parking lot, completing our last activity in Acadia National Park. The only thing that's left is to get that lobster roll that we didn't get for lunch. After asking a few people where to go, they all recommended Stewman's to us, so that's where we headed to. This was a fun spot right on the water in Bar Harbor, and it wasn't too busy as it was still pretty early for dinner. I was told that they're well known for their lobster and for their blueberry beer. Apparently blueberries are grown all over Maine, so it's a popular thing to get when you're in the state. This is a Maine blueberry beer with fresh Maine blueberries in it. Not bad, it's like a fruity ale. I don't know about floating blueberries, but I think I think I'd dig it. Oh yeah, nice punch. Nothing like a crunchy beer. <laughs> the lobster roll here was really good, but it was pretty small. Either that or I was just really hungry. We found a lobster roll to end our time. And just like that, we're back to our hotel after a full 36 hours exploring Acadia National Park. Hopefully you enjoyed exploring with us. Be sure to come check out this park for yourself, and we will see you on the next one.